All right, so in this video, um, this question seems to have a lot going on. So let's just start to break down what it's, what it's asking, and that happens right here. It says, write the letter of each property that describes the step mj used below to solve for x. All right, so that tells me that in this area right here, right, they're saying a student solved for x. Okay, they said x is 8. I see that. And to solve it, to break it down, uh, they must have used certain properties. And I see that they're saying, okay, between these two steps, what property are they using? Between these two steps, what property are they using? And here, between these two steps, what property are they using? So, all right, well, here is a list of properties to choose from, A through H. So there's a lot of properties here, commutative property, associative, distributive, and properties of equality. So let's just begin by, I, I would look at this step right here first, right? This is the least intimidating step. So let, let's see what happens. Well, I know that 3x divided by 3 is x. I know 24 divided by 3 is 8. So they divided both sides by 3. So that means I would put the letter h here. h says the multiplicative property of equality. That property says if we're multiplying um, each side by a number, in this case we're dividing by 3, which is really the same as multiplying by 1 third. For example, if you have 9 times 1 third, that's 3. And that's the same as 9 divided by 3. These are the same thing. So here we're really multiplying each side by 1 third, and that's the multiplicative property of equality. All right, well, let's keep going up here. Between these two steps, I notice a 4x and a 3x. And I notice there's a 1x on the right side of the equation, but no 1x here. So that just tells me they must have subtracted 1x from both sides, right? Because 1x minus 1x is 0x. There's, there's no x's over here. And 4x minus 1x is 3x, which is what we have right here. So I put the letter G. That's the additive property of equality. So in this case, we're really adding negative 1x to both sides, which is the same as subtracting 1x from both sides. And that keeps our equations balanced, just like multiplying both sides by a number, adding uh, both sides by a number will keep our equation balanced. Finally, we go to our first step here. Uh, I notice that there's 2 times x plus 3. And they have 2x plus 6 over here. So that just tells me that they use the distributive property. They multiplied 2 by x to get 2x, and then 2 by 3 to get 6. And this happened over addition. So we can put the distributive property of multiplication over addition, which is choice E. The distributive property helps us multiply a certain value, either over addition or if there were a subtraction sign here over a subtraction. The other property is the commutative property of addition. Tells us that if we add numbers in any order, that will not change the outcome. So a plus b would equal b plus a. The commutative property of multiplication is the same for multiplication. a b equals b a. The associative property of addition tells me if I am adding numbers, I can add numbers in different groups and get the same result. So if I added a plus b plus c, Right? I could add b plus c first and then a, or I could add a and b and then c. The associative property of multiplication, I'll write over here because I'm running out of room. If we're multiplying a times b times c, we can multiply a times b first. We could associate those two factors first and then multiply it by c. Or we can multiply b times c first and then multiply that product by a. Either way, we get the same thing. So the associative property is really about how we group or associate numbers. The commutative property is how we move numbers around. I, I think of commuters moving back and forth to work. All right, thanks.